In this video, we're going to solve a problem which appear in J 2023, but it's not a IIT J problem. It's a West Bengal J problem. So let's go ahead and solve this particular problem. So in this particular problem, it's asked to find out the integration of zero to n one uh, in numerator and denominator. We have the greatest integer function and the fractional parts of it. Okay, that's it. So let's go ahead and solve this particular problem. So first here, consider the integration i in the form of i1 divided by i2, where i1 is the integration in the numerator and i2 is the integration in the denominator, where that uh, curly bracket x is the fractional part and obviously the square bracket x is the integral part. So, okay, that's it. Now let's go ahead. Now we uh, have to find out these two integrations separately, right? And then we have to divide. That's a, a basic approach for it. Now let's go ahead. We consider any real number, right? For example, I consider 1.24, right? It's a real number with a, some fractional part of it. So here the integer part is 1 and a fractional part is 0 0.24. So it can be written as, as 1 plus 0 0.24, right? Now what is 1? 1 is the integral part and 0 0.24 is the fractional part. So therefore we understand that, that any real number x can be written as, as sum of the fractional part and as well as the integral part. So therefore we understand the fractional part will be equal to x minus the integral part or the greatest integer function whatever we call it okay that's it. So therefore we can use this definition right to solve the integration of i2. So let's apply that. Now we can easily apply the uh, definite integration formula and we can separate it as well. So if we separate it right we can find it as 0 to n x dx minus 0 to n the integral from part of the second part that 0 to n box of x right or the greatest integer function of x is obviously the i1 for us. Now we know that that 0 to n x dx can be easily calculated right. So let's calculate that. So that integration we can compute it as n squared by 2 and that's why i2 will be equal to n squared by 2 minus i1. We obtain the i2 and i1, right? So now, now notice that, right? If I now able to calculate the uh, integration i1, right? My job is done, right? That's it. So here, what is that i1? It's actually i1 need to be calculated based on the integral part of it of x. So based way to, to go ahead and understand through a function, though we can remember the definition, then we can process. But here we go ahead with the uh, uh, graphical interpretation of it so that nobody has to remember anything, right? Let's go ahead. So here we consider a x axis and y axis and consider a graph paper on it and gives the uh, axis uh, label, right? Uh, based on our need. So see that here in x axis we go ahead with 1 to n and in y axis we also go to 1 to n minus 1. Okay, that's it. And let's go ahead. So we know that that when a number is lies between 0 to 1 the integer part is 0 when it will be 1 to 2 integer part is 1 and so on right 2 to 3 is 2 3 to 4 is 3 uh, 4 to 5 is 4 5 to 6 is 5 and so on so therefore between n minus 2 and n minus 1 it should be n minus 2 and between n minus 1 to n it should be n so this will be the uh, values of this function. So now see that that integral function of the box in x or the bracket square bracket x, right, will change its values at e in between each integer. So therefore, to calculate that i1, right, we have to divide the 0 to n interval into n subintervals. So therefore, we can write down it as 0 to 1, 1 to 2, 2 to 3, and so on as n minus 1 to n. Now notice that in 0 to 1 right uh, greatest integer function or the integral part of it is actually 0 then 1 then 2 then 3 and so on so therefore we can easily rewrite that in a easiest form so that's it so now see that this i1 now easily computed to solve it first in an easier way, right, we just take, right, that 0, 1, 2, 3, right, and n minus 2 outside of the integration, which is very uh, obvious there because it's a constant. 
Now let's go ahead. So now uh, here we need to calculate that 0 to 1 dx, 1 to 2 dx, 2 to 3 dx and so on and so forth. So all are actually will be in the form of n minus 1 to n dx, right? So the difference of that lower limit and upper limit is the integer value 1. Now let's uh, solve this integration. So if we do that, it will be uh, n minus n minus 1 and which gives me 1. So therefore, all the integrations, right, in I1, right, will be equal to 1 itself. So therefore, I can write I1 is equal to the sum of 0 to n minus 1. So it's a sum in AP series. So we know that, right, sum of 1 to 3, the 3 up to n is equal to n into n plus 1 divided by 2. But here we need to calculate that up to n minus 1. So we replace n by n minus 1. So therefore, we go ahead and write n minus 1 into n divided by 2. So that's the value of I1. So obtained. Now our job is to obtain the value of I2, which can be easily computed by subtracting n square minus 2 minus n into n minus 1 divided by 2. So see that if I multiply the second part, right, and do the basic arithmetic, we calculate n squared by 2 as the value of n1. And hence, as the value of I2, sorry. So therefore, we calculate I1, we calculate I2. So obviously, uh, the required integration I will be equal to n into n, sorry, n into n minus 1 divided by 2, divided by n by 2, n by 2, n by 2 get cancelled, and it will be n minus 1. And that's why for this particular problem, n minus 1 is the correct answer or the correct value. That's it. So it's a direct application of that two formula that uh, n real number can be written as, as a sum of it, integral part as well as the fractional part. So that concept and then the basic definition of the greatest integer function. That's it. Hope you understood the problem. Thank you.